Ladies and gentlemen, the update on this story is actually that the person that was a person of interest, from what I understand, has already been arrested. So I'm going to put that out there really quickly. We just don't have a name just yet. If I am able to get a name, I'll probably attach it either in the tags or in the title, but I'll update it in the thumbnail. But this is an individual that as of right now is accused of doing something very heinous in Houston, Texas. So Texas takes yet another L. Don't know how many more L's they can give out in Houston, but apparently we got to give out a lot. But I'm getting this information from KHOU.com. So thank you for the article. Before we get into this and before I offend somebody, you might find my content controversial or offensive. The information is coming from credible sources. This video commentary also contains my personal opinions about the facts of this story. The point is, is to use this story as a cautionary tale in hopes of preventing tragedies like these to children going forward. Viewer discretion is advised. That is your official disclaimer. Now, we did not get a good look at the individual. We did get a chance to finally get a picture of the father, so it was nice to be able to see his face and his son. I don't know what they got caught up in, and I think that these men might have knew each other in some capacity. But this is the individual that they have not revealed his identity as of this video. But like I said, maybe we'll have to uh, revisit that at a later time. Uh, may, uh, maybe update it. But a person of interest has been detained in connection to the death of a two-year-old boy found inside a stolen SUV Tuesday after his father was shot to death hours earlier doing a meetup, according to the Houston Police Department. So if they're saying a meetup, that leads me to believe that they probably knew each other. I don't know what he was involved in. It's just hard to know. Houston police tweeted the update that the individual was being questioned. The post did not mention if this was the same man seen in the surveillance video released on Tuesday night. And I think I'll show you guys a video of that, but that's basically it right there. He just walked inside the store, bought something, walked out. The chain of events unfolded shortly before 2 p.m. on El Camino Del Rey Street near Chimney Rock Road, which is on the Gulfton, which is in the Gulfton area. Houston police said that the 38-year-old shooting victim, the father, met up with the suspect for an unknown reasons. The two of them got in some sort of argument, and that's when the suspect pulled out a gun and shot the father multiple times. According to police, he died at the scene. The suspect jumped into the victim's SUV and took off. They all, we also have a little bit of surveillance footage. I'll show that here in just a moment. If I had to judge this on the surface, and I mean no disrespect to the family, but what it sounds like is it sounds like a potential illicit deal gone bad. Maybe something had to do with drugs. I don't know that, and I don't want to call the father out for that because we don't know. While police were trying to locate the suspect and the stolen vehicle, they received a call at about 6.30 p.m. hours later from a woman who reported her husband and child were missing. She gave police enough information to help them conclude that her husband was the man that was shot to death on El Camino del Rey. Police said that they didn't know a child was in the SUV until the woman called. With more information on the stolen vehicle, police were able to locate it about 30 minutes after receiving a woman's phone call on Elm Street near Renwick Drive. Nightmare on Elm Street. The child was found unresponsive in the back seat. Police said officers broke the glass to get the child and render aid, but it was too late and the child had died. So I'm assuming that was probably heat exhaustion. He left the child in there, locked it, and left. That's what it sounds like. The cause of death will be determined by an autopsy, but police said that it could be heat exhaustion. The unknown suspect is on the run. I think they said that they had him in custody though, right? It says a person of interest has been detained. But then here, it says 
The unknown suspect is on the run. Police describe him as a black man with a slim build. He was wearing a white a white t-shirt with black shorts and a distinctive black Raiders cap. He appeared to have long facial hair around the chin. Houston police are asking anybody with information on the suspect or these two incidents to call their homicide division at 713-308-3600 or Crime Stoppers at 713-222-8477. But from what I understand, I thought they said that they had him in custody. But let me give you guys the fair usage before we show our news video. Federal law allows citizens to reproduce, distribute, or exhibit portions of copyrighted motion pictures, videotapes, or video discs under certain circumstances without the authorization of the copyright holder. This is called fair use. It is allowed for purposes of criticism, news reporting, teaching, and parody, which doesn't infringe of copyright under 17 U.S.C. 107. To be honest, I just can't imagine any other scenarios where they could be going on a meetup, get into a verbal altercation about something, then he shoot him and kill him. That sounds like that's either money related or drugs or both. I could be wrong. Correct me if I'm wrong. But that's what it sounds like. I'm Sharon Ben Chow. We have an update now to an awful crime that left a father and his toddler dead in Southwest Houston. HPD says that a man shot and killed the father, then stole his vehicle with his two year old boy in the back seat, and that child was later found dead. Police confirmed they have a person of interest currently in custody. Our Ugochi Iloka live from where the arrest was made. What do you know, Ugochi? Sure, man, we know Houston police officers stopped that man near this apartment gate you see over there at the Alora early this morning, and now he's being questioned. One witness who wouldn't speak to me on camera says they yelled, get down to the man before taking him in. Now, police say he's somehow connected to a father being killed just down the street from where we are now and his son being left for dead close by. Take a look at your screen. Here's surveillance video of the suspect they believe is responsible for both the father and son's deaths. The two-year-old boy's father was killed in the Chimney Rock in El Camino del Rey area yesterday afternoon, but they didn't realize the little boy was taken in the stolen SUV for several hours. Police say the search for that vehicle didn't escalate until the boy's mother called 911 to report her two-year-old son and husband missing. Investigators began piecing things together, realizing the shooting victim was her husband. His vehicle was gone and the boy with it. Officer say once they got that call from the mom, it only took 30 minutes to find the SUV on Elm Street, which is just four minutes from where we are now. But by then, it was too late. The family of the father and son identified them as Mike and Micah Aceen. They spoke only to KGU 11 News within the last half hour. Dad Houston. <laughs> oh, whoa. I want my nephew, but he's only two years old. He does not know how to hold a flag. My brother has always been a peaceful man. I need my brother back. Just so heartbreaking there. And Houston police say the father of the two-year-old son that was uh, killed, we understand, was having some sort of argument with the man seeing on the surveillance video before he was shot uh, several times. Now, you will hear more of that emotional interview with the family of these victims. Jason Miles will be following this story throughout the rest of the afternoon, only right here on KGU 11 News. Sure. And that actually goes back to another video I did earlier when I said the Crown Act and they and they support our women wearing their natural hair. And I actually love her natural hair. And I'm glad she actually, you know, has the confidence to be able to do that. She's a big girl, you know, it's not heart healthy, but nonetheless, definitely love her natural hair. Salute to that. A very sad scene here on Houston's southwest side as HPD investigators and the medical examiner's office are looking into the death of a two year old in the back seat of a car. Take a look at this scene where sometime after 630 on Tuesday evening, investigators found this black SUV parked and locked on the side of the street. That young child unresponsive in the back seat. It's the same car that was stolen hours earlier on Tuesday from another scene less than a mile from here where police say a suspect shot and killed a 38 year old man believed to be the child's father 
after a possible argument near a gas station. When a woman reported her son and husband missing hours later, officers searched until they found the stolen vehicle here. We found the SUV behind us right here on Elm Street in the 5900 block. Officers immediately observed a child in the back seat, non-responsive. They tried to save this little boy, and um, but we will work with them. We will help them. Um, but it is the hardest thing I've ever done, and I've been here a long time. Houston police releasing these surveillance photos and videos of the person they believe to be the suspect. They say he wore a distinct Raiders hat at the time of the crimes. It's still not clear how this two year old died, but police say that heat may have something to do with it. And this morning they are still asking for the public's help in identifying that suspect. And now to breaking news. Police want you to see these images of a man wanted in a deadly shooting who then left a child to die inside of a stolen vehicle. The SUV was recovered with that toddler dead inside. Now to breaking news. We have an update to the heartbreak playing out for a local family. Thank you for joining us tonight. I'm Daniela Guzman and I'm Keith Garvin. It is a story KPRC 2 first broke for you yesterday afternoon, and now we know the situation much more tragic than we knew then. A father and his toddler dead and a suspected killer has been arrested. We've been tracking three locations where the father was killed, where his two year old son was found dead and where police caught up to the suspect. KPRC 2's Rowan Belogan has been asking questions and tracking the developments. He's joining us now with what we've learned throughout the day. Rowan. Keith Daniela, we're on Elm Street. This is where the police found that little boy's body. Now at this hour, Houston police hasn't yet identified the identity of the suspect as they wait for him to be processed through the courts. This 38 year old man facing charges of murder and tampering with evidence in the connection to the death of a dad and his two year old son. Investigators say this is him in surveillance video. They allege he shot a security guard multiple times on El Camino del Rey yesterday, got into the victim's black SUV and drove off with the victim's two year old son still inside. Investigators found the vehicle hours later after the boy's mother reported him and her husband missing. The black SUV Chevy Traverse found less than a mile away from the shooting sites on Elm Street. They broke out the glass, immediately started to try to render aid. CPR called for ambulance, which did arrive, but sadly it was too late. Authorities believe the man in this surveillance video is responsible. It's the hardest thing we do. Children, you know, children are innocent. It's the hardest thing we do. So it affects them. They tried to save this little boy. We may because we have a kid too. Romo Rubio lives on Elm where the two year old's body was discovered. If we see the kid be crying inside. We can go over there because I have a, just today on afternoon. I have my garage open and I'll be there for like two hours mm -hmm. and we don't see nothing. An autopsy underway to determine exactly how the two year old died. Reporting live, Robin Belogan, KPRC, Tune in. Look, I'm going to be honest. I'm not expecting for the wife to come out and be honest about the reasons why they met up, what they were going to do. I'm sure she would have had some idea about what he was involved in. I'm assuming that. He, that she just had no idea. You know what I'm saying? Usually when you live with somebody, you're married to somebody, you're pretty familiar with, you know, the things that they do, people that they know. You share a lot of that stuff, or at least you should be open. So I'm assuming that she probably knew, but us getting that information from her, I'm pretty sure that's not going to happen. But as far as if this is the person that did it, We continue to keep doing this to ourselves. And I don't hear enough people saying that. <sighs> people that look just like us are the biggest threat to us. And I continue to keep proving that. We hear it every day. We pay it no attention. And we act like the police are the ones out there to get us. Well, what, what do you tell this family? What do you tell that little boy? What do you tell his, what do you tell the wife and the family? 
that the big bad boogeyman police and, and, and the government and all of that is out to get them. When the number one threat when we're kids all the way up and through our adult life are people that look just like us. That's the biggest threat to us. We do us the worst. We treat us the worst. Talk to us the worst. And just do the worst things to each other. And I will hope to live to see the day when we can break that trend and stop this. When they talk about put the guns down, it ain't got nothing to do with the guns. People are, are pushing people over in the lakes, running people over with cars, stabbing each other, setting people on fire. I don't hear anybody saying put the cars down, put the matches down, put the gasoline down. Stop kicking people in the face after you get into a fight and they fall down and you stomp their brains in. Put the shoes down, put the feet down. Put the knives down. Maybe we should get some, get some legislation on jumping people. I don't know, man. Until we start to hold real accountability and the people who are perpetrating this ignorance then I don't think we're going to get much change. But that's why I say I continue to speak this and hope it comes into fruition that we can start holding accountability where it really needs to be held accountable. So whoever did this, I hope they are held accountable. If it's him, hold him accountable. If it's not him, hold the person who's accountable. But if that's the baby boy, which I believe it is, beautiful, beautiful child. If that's the dad, I'm not sure if it is, but I think it is. I don't know, man. Just keep the family in their prayers. RIP to those lost souls. Let me know what you guys think in the comment section. Hopefully somebody will turn up some real answers. Okay. Thank you.